I was watching a video today that this guy, Tech Lead, put out. It was actually a pretty good video. He was talking about the Ethereum founder putting out a blog post where he's throwing up a bunch of techno jargon. And one, one way that I know Tech Lead is experienced, because he, he pointed out how the techno jargon blog barf festival that uh, the uh, Ethereum guy put out was was meant to more or less impress rather than inform. You see that a lot of times. People will uh, put up smoke screens of tech jargon and fancy speech and jargon and terminology in almost any field. And it's done on purpose. It's done to create an impression of competency. Now, they may be just hyper-competent nerds or hyper-competent in their field, and they just don't know how to communicate well. But oftentimes, it's just an obfuscation. It's just a way to impress. It's just a way to impress. So um, I, have a, I have a friend of mine. Well, I haven't talked to this guy in a long time. But back in the day, way back in the day, he had zero programming skills whatsoever, like zero. And so he went to see some of the suits, the suits or the uh, management, who, have, who had zero programming skills at all as well. And uh, he had one weapon, though, over the management. His weapon was that he knew the jargon. He didn't know what it meant, but at least he knew the jargon. So one day, he's uh, he's like a cog in a wheel, low-level guy, making just above minimum wage or a little higher. But So he goes in to see one of his bosses, and he says, you know, we should automate the system. And... What we should do is use the boom, 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 boom. So they started throwing out a bunch of tech terms. So the suits, they're like, well, I guess he knows what he's talking about, right? Because he's looking, look at all those words he's using, all those big words. So they gave him the mandate to produce this, um, which turned out to be a very important piece of software. So he then got money and then he hired developers and competent people. And then they built this software, and his whole career has been based on that, based on just throwing out terms that he had no nothing, he knew nothing about, like literally nothing about. I remember one day, he, uh, I came in, I went to see him for lunch, and I came in and uh, went to his desk, and he was working at a very big institution, and I said, uh, "Hey, what's going on there, buddy?" And he said, "Ah, oh, you know, working on this thing." And then he started giving me his uh, BS speech with all the tech terms, but. F Unfortunately for him, I was actually a developer. So I said, I said, hey, guy, you're just you're, you're saying a bunch of nonsense. There's nothing that you say is making any sense. And he smiled and chuckled, and we went to lunch. So to give you an idea of what he would do, is he would go up to somebody, and I'm just going to pull jargon out of the out of the out of the ether, ether out of the ether, and I will um, give you an idea of what he said. So he would go up to some suit who know nothing about coding or technology at all, really. He said, okay, so I have this idea for this great project. So we're going to take jQuery and we're going to use Go to hook that into AWS. And from AWS, we'll be able to consume services through Node.js. And then with those services, we'll be able to create a WordPress theme and, de and deploy a one-page WordPress theme, which is going to save people so much time. So that's the chain of events that we're going to use if... And if we have to really scale this thing, maybe we can get an, a Microsoft Access database going there on the side. And we'll use uh, microservices to feed back into AWS. And then we'll shard that data database. And if AWS can handle the load, then maybe we can jump over to Azure or even DigitalOcean if need be. Maybe even GoDaddy. You know, if, if it gets really tough we and AWS can handle it or Azure or Google Cloud, we can we can check out GoDaddy. They they got some pretty powerful tools out there. So anyway, you get the idea of what he would do. He'd do this kind of stuff. It was crazy. And so now he's like this top level guy. <laughs> and he got he just was able to just use jargon to get his way through it. So the tech lead guy was talking about he, when he would look at resumes and he would see the resumes were packed full of jargon, designed to impress. Now again, that kind of stuff can work when you're um, trying to uh, convince some sort of suit who has no technology background that you know what you're talking about. 
It can work again with reporters. It can re work with other people who just don't know the, the deal. But at the end of the day, um, you will get caught at the end of the day. But you may get caught after you've made a ton of money, and then you're good. So, yeah, that's a good video. I invite you to go see it. I'll put a link below. It's, uh, you know, he's a funny guy. But uh, he's right about that. One of the common tactics, and it's not just in tech, by the way. One of the common tactics that people use to uh, create an impression, a false impression of competency or of, uh, or of, um, of complexity, they, they will use a lot of jargon. They'll throw a lot of jargon at you to create this impression that they're extremely competent or to create an impression that their software really works or their solution is very advanced. Why do I bring this up? Keep in mind, keep in mind, you know, when you hear people starting to blah, 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 you know, it could be just a little bit of a, uh, a tactic on their part to create an impression of competency. It may be there. It may not be there. I can tell you from somebody who's been a developer since 94, well, writing code since 94, hard code is simple code. Basically, if you can write really simple code that gets the job done, that's a sure sign of a master developer. If you can break down a complex situation into something simple, that's another indicator of somebody who's at a very high level in the game. So there you go. I hope this is useful. If you like this video, subscribe. I got to do that to YouTube. If you want to learn how to code from somebody who's actually taught people who went on to work for Fangs, people who have half billion dollar startups and a whole slew of people who've gone on to become successful freelancers or get jobs in great companies, check out my courses below.